Thank you. Okay, so we'll uh, go straight into our business unless, uh, I suppose if anyone has any questions about anything from last night, mm -hmm. now might be a good time. Everybody's got their book, I'm sure. And, okay. If not, Miss City Manager, who, you, who are we going first here? Public Donald, Works? Donald, okay. yes. Oh, he's already up there. He's there ready to go. Okay, ready to go. Excellent. Okay, good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Appreciate the opportunity to come up here and uh, give you a overview of the proposed budget for uh, fiscal year 2018 for Public Works Department. Before we get into it, uh, of course, anytime you have a question, stop me and uh, I'll try to answer it. Hey, Donna, we're having a little bit of a hard time hearing you. Okay. Sorry, is that is that better? That's a little better, yes. All right. I'll lean into it a little bit then. Okay. Lean in. Lean into it. So um, it's fascinating. We're leaning. We're leaning. Into it. <laughs> okay. So on this first slide, I have a, just a few stats, real quick. Uh, you know, Public Works Department responds to an average of twelve thousand four hundred work orders per year. Uh, some of those work orders include uh, street failures, pothole repairs, water and sewer line repairs, uh, some stormwater issues traffic signals, and even some engineering stuff design, uh, related to design, plan review, and inspection. Public Works is divided into uh, two funding sources. Uh, you got your general fund divisions, which is engineer streets and uh, traffic control. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the water wastewater enterprise fund, which is, of course, all your water and wastewater, uh, includes utility billing and industrial pretreatment environmental as well. Uh, go ahead and start with our engineering division. Uh, for fiscal year 2018, we proposed uh, eight full-time employees, which are responsible for design, management, and over oversight of all the city's CIP projects. I'd like to bring your attention to the uh, the negative uh, $36,000 uh, variance in personnel. Uh, this is the only personnel line item in all the public works budgets that has a negative variance, and that's due to reducing uh, reducing our FTEs by one, uh, we're, there's a uh, inspection, a construction inspector position that we're not gonna fill. We feel that moving forward, uh, the level of uh, projects that we're gonna have until about 2021 is gonna remain pretty flat and that we can do without that position until probably 2021 when we have some more projects come online. At that time, we'll review it and either ask to add that position back or maybe even try to contract that out just depending on the level we need. Uh, M&O has increased by almost $20,000. That's mainly attributable to the purchase of a replacement vehicle. Minor capital adjustment, one-time expenditures, uh, $9,945, which is all the stipend program, which we talked about yesterday on the other, de other departments, which leaves recurring expenses at uh, 741684 There's no questions about engineering. I'll move into uh, streets and drainage. This division has 27 FTEs are responsible for 322 miles of roadways and uh, 452 miles of storm, storm sewer. Uh, you'll see, as I mentioned before, there's an increase in personnel that's mostly attributable to the uh, stipend program and some other uh, payroll adjustments. M&O has increased by 148,000 and uh, that, that difference is mainly attributable to an increase in uh, street improvement and maintenance projects, which we'll talk about on some future slides. And then a, about a 220,000 decrease in replacement vehicles. And then uh, I think Gilbert's gonna talk about this a little bit later on, but we're uh, reallocating some street sweeping funding, moving it out of the street department division into the uh, pre-treatment division uh, because uh, we're seeing that uh, street sweeping is, is uh, a big environmental issue, keeping that street debris out of the storm sewers. Capital has a decrease of about $68,000, uh, which is basically there's, we had some costs that we uh, had this year in fiscal year 2017 that we're, we're not buying any additional equipment in, the, in fiscal year 2018. One-time expenses in the streets and drainage include again the stipend program, North Heights uh, phase four street improvement for 1.4 million and Sp Springwood uh, phase one uh, for 422,000 out of the general fund. And I'll talk more about these in the next few slides. You probably remember this uh, slide from our CIP 
uh, discussion in April of this year. Uh, we have uh, three projects. We have the 2018 residential street projects, which is North Heights phase four rehab overlay, Colorado to Laurent for 1.4. And then again, the uh, uh, Spring Creek rehab, I'm sorry, Spring, is that Spring Creek or Spring Wood? I just confused my, Spring Wood. It's not labeled correctly there. Uh -huh. For 1.6 million, uh, 422,000 of that 1.622 million is gonna, is proposed to come out of the general fund. The remaining 1.2 million is contingent upon the sale of Navarro del Norte. <clears throat> In addition, we have the uh, 2018 seal coat maintenance program. Uh, again, that's a, a maintenance program only. It includes country club addition, 715,000, country club village and benchmark for 791,000, tropical acres for 311,000, and Highland Estates and Northcrest for 235,000. Also listed up there is uh, some general sidewalk projects for 42,000 that we'll talk about a little bit more in a future slide. Would you answer for me again? Seal coat is not just filling in the cracks. That's the maintenance that we've recently done, like in Eagle Creek, yes, and Meadow yes, Creek. Yes, ma'am. That's a exactly right. Exactly right. Thank you. So, when we're talking about a a rehab project, we're typically looking at projects that are have a street rating of 80 or less. So, in the North Heights Phase Four. Uh, consists of reconstructing the streets in the North Heights, addition on Colorado Street uh, between Laurent and Navarro, and that's 1.4 million, and the street rating here is a 70. Uh, this is definitely a project that is a, a full rehab project. Uh, another full rehab project is uh, Springwood, consists of reconstructing the streets in the Springwood subdivision for 1.62 million. Street rating there is 73. Another one that is uh, definitely a full rehab. I have a question on that one. Sure. I notice that you don't have the entrance marked at all, so the entrance won't have any work done on it. The entrance was recently redone uh, about uh, two years ago, I, I, I think. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. And that was a, a full rehab of the entrance. So we talked about a little bit, I mentioned the general sidewalk project for $42,000. Um, I can't tell you that I have a actual project picked out yet. We are working on a sidewalk inventory that we hope to bring back to y'all uh, winter of this year. Uh, it's been a very difficult project to put together, but we're working on it. But what I can tell you is that um, $42,000 will get you about 1,250 feet of four foot sidewalk or 1,050 feet of five foot sidewalk. It's a, uh, go back to that map for a minute. It's, sorry. Yeah, there's no sense in making any humorous comments about it. Obviously, there's so much red there. Yeah. That's, uh, that's very frustrating. But it is interesting to see um, the neighborhoods built after. Mm -hmm. Certain ordinances are in place. They all have the sidewalks. Right. You can and, see that. <clears throat> yeah, I should hmm. point out that this is every street, regardless of open ditch or what it yeah. is, whatever, that that does not have a sidewalk. We are working on bringing that map down to take out those sections that are open ditch that probably won't ever have a sidewalk. And, and to be able to focus yeah. on, on uh, priority areas such as major thoroughfares, around schools, things like that, things that we consider a priority. Tech, text dot will not put anything along the loop out there up no, and down no. as as it develops the developer will have to do it correct thank you sure so 2018 seal coat project we talked about those just a few minutes ago and again i want to point out that this is a maintenance project and when we think of maintenance projects we think of streets that have an average street rating of 80 or better ones that we think um we can save them and continue their, extend their life for a few years. This total core, uh, uh, two core seal coat uh, is $2.5 million. I have a question on that too. Sure. I'm not a street engineer. <clears throat> I'm not either. Uh, but we all get the phone calls because people don't really like the <clears throat> chip seal as much as they like the streets that we just covered up. Right. Um, is there, 
how much is the cost differential? Could we do one coat of the chip seal and a coat of hot mix? Uh, what's the cost differential? Does that even work? If you're going to do a hot mix, you don't need to do a chip seal at all. And the cost differential, Ken, do you have any idea what that is between a linear footage? Cost, the cost difference is about $10, 10 to $15 a square yard. So you equate that into a linear, I'd have to figure out the linear foot, but it's quite a bit difference. Quite a bit. Yes. And answer this, though, for Ms. Scott. Would you ever do a chip seal, one layer, and then come back and do a hot mix on top of that chip seal as the rehab? I if think it, that was one of our questions. If, if, it's a, if it's a re, there's, in, there's a rehabilitation project, and then there's a reclaim project. The reclaim is still falling into the maintenance program, and that's where we reclaim the, the existing base material, and we add the chip seal to it. That's still a, a maintenance project. The rehabilitation is where you take the existing base material out that has failed, and then put in new base material, and, and that's considered a re, almost a rebuild. That's where we put the hot mix on it. Uh, does that answer the question and a little bit? And no. the reason that you don't put it on on just the the chip seal is just because is because it, it's of the cost. cost. It, it and you have to mill the outside edges, which adds more cost to it, so that you don't have you build up of hot mix over the gutter lines. So okay. there's there's more to it than just adding a layer of hot mix to it, but it can be done, but it's just it's more costly. And the, the chip seal provides a seal of the road base, the, the road section and the base, and it's a very effective maintenance program that's, that all the cities, state does it, and over a time period that chip seal will wear and become smooth just as if it were hot mix. Uh, a good example is Riverside Park. Those streets are chip sealed, but you can, it's hard to tell that they are chip sealed versus hot mix. Well, let's go the other direction then. Do you have to put the two coats of chip seal on? And I'm, now I'm just looking at cost Versus as well. one course. The two Versus course, one. when you do the two course, it provides that extra layer of, of seal over the road. It also, what you can do is you can put one layer of larger rock, gets more the asphalt sealant, and then you put a la the next layer, you put a little bit smaller rock. And what that does is, of course, it gets more asphalt, provides a better seal, but they lay in together, and it actually provides a smoother a little bit smoother of a course than just a single. It's just to add a layer of protection for minimal cost. Thank you. Okay. I'm trying. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. You, you will, um, and I'm sorry, I know that we'll send a letter to every resident before we start the project. You know, Absolutely. I, I, there's some great YouTube videos out there of this process that explain it. Text dot mm -hmm. produced a few, maybe even put a link to one of those videos in the letter, I don't know. You know, yeah. somebody might be that interested to We, we have done that. We've been sending letters out, and, mm -hmm. and we have put a link to the presentation that, the, that Lynn Short did up here. There's a YouTube link and explains that process, and there's a link in there to the uh, TxDOT video. So we'll con we will continue to do that. Okay. So earlier I said that we typically try to do these uh, uh, maintenance projects when the average street rating is an 80 or above uh, country club edition average street rating of 89 same thing for uh, country club village and benchmark subdivision tropical acres is a 93 and you're maybe asking yourself why would we go in and do a maintenance program on a street rate on a area that has average street rating of 93 and that's simple answer so we can keep it a 93 so it doesn't start to fall and then uh, Highland, Highland North Crest Estate South, the street rating of 80. Is there any questions on streets before we move into traffic control? Donald, when, uh, when is the North Heights uh, project going to be done? About three years? And do you have an estimate on that? We're on, uh, this year we'll be doing year three on our streets of a 70 project. Okay. Yeah, it should be 20. 2020, I think. If you've not driven in that area, it's very nice it's been completed. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. It's I've had nice. lots of compliments. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so traffic control. Uh, nine full-time employees are responsible for 88 signalized intersections, 61 school zone flashers, over 14,500 street signs, and 363 miles of pavement markings and stripes. Again, we have the uh, slight increase in personnel due to the stipend. M&O is down uh, about 209,000, which is due to uh, uh, a reduction of about 155,000 in lights and power. We talked about that a little bit last night. And then we have a couple of, uh, of uh, small multi-year programs that we finished. One of those, as an example, would be uh, adding uh, wireless beacons to our school zone flasher signs, uh, school zone flashers where we can uh, monitor those and program those wirelessly without having to go out and actually manually put our hands on them every time the clocks drift. Um, that was a multi-year program that we finished in this current year, and so we don't have to do that next year. We're just buying some spare parts is about all we're doing. <clears throat> and then uh, small capital, and that pretty much is it for the uh, general fund, but I, I would like to note that uh, overall between fiscal year 20 and 18 and 2017, we have about $104,000 uh, reduction in overall budget. Okay, moving into water and wastewater fund. Keep in mind that this slide represents all of the water and wastewater funds, so that's plants, wastewater plants, UBO, the whole, whole nine yards. 95 full-time employees responsible for 380 miles of water pipe, 350 miles of sewer pipe, 24,000 water meters, one service water plant, 10 off-channel reservoirs, four pumping stations, five water towers, 10 water wells, two wastewater treatment plants, and 17 lift stations. So that's a, a lot of items out there in the field. Uh, again, the personnel uh, line item has gone up. m and line item has gone down about $2 million. And uh, the largest item there is a reduction in some of the uh, construction items we're doing. Uh, for example, um, we have a $1.5 million dewatering project that we're doing at the wastewater treatment plant where we're installing a, a, a new uh, belt filter press. That's on the books for this year. It will not be on the books for next year. So that's a large part of that, that $2 million. Uh, debt service down $50,000. Capital is a, a slight increase of $110,000 and the uh, majority of that is due to uh, a net difference of a water tower rehab project that's on the books for next year, proposed for next year, which is water tower number six on Nursery Drive uh, near Lake Forest. And then a decrease in some other capital projects that we funded in fiscal year 2017 that won't be on the books for 2018. Well, yes, $750,000 SCADA project is the largest one. So overall, total expenditures uh, proposed for fiscal year 2018 is uh, $26.8 million. You can see there that 35% of that is uh, directly attributable to debt service. Uh, the next largest is 15% uh, is water production and then 14% uh, for water distribution. So it appears that water costs the most. Uh, water one-time expenditures, again, the stipend program, 118000 Water tower number six rehab, one million. And then we've got some uh, uh, small, uh, small equipment in there as well, a new tapping machine, and then some uh, emergency line, repla line replacement money. Uh, yes, sir. What do we, it, it's not real clear, Mayor, perhaps I didn't hear you clearly. We're kicking something down the road to get this 1,681,000 one one-time expenses. Which, what are we kicking down the road? Uh, I don't think I'm following you. The one-time expenses are down by 1681 Right. That right. means something we're not doing. Yeah, there's some, there's some large items that we did this year that, we, that were taking place this year that, that, we don't have, that we don't have that expenditure in the following year. Okay. So, yeah, we're, we're following the CIP, basically. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's a capital item. Yeah, it's a capital it's not item. A Most of it is a capital item. Yeah. So it was a one-time capital you know, item. We, we have a tendency to defer these things, and yeah. if we're not careful, yeah. you've deferred them until it gets to be too much of a right. trouble. Right. There's, there's no large capital items that are projects that are being deferred at, at this time, not in the Water Wastewater Fund anyway. And on that comment, actually, that $1 million, it was set for 2020. It was moved forward to 2018, so we actually... 
pushing things up a little faster. Got you. So okay. That helps. Thank you, sir. The, the things that have to be uh, the last two, I guess, the wastewater treatment plant, is are they under warranty? Is that our part of them? Uh, yes, there is a there is a warranty period on the wastewater plant. I can't tell you off the top of my head what it is. Typically, it's it's a year, uh, but I'm not 100 percent sure that's what it is. I was just especially <clears throat> thinking about the air conditioner unit. Is that at the regional plant, Donald? That five ton? Oh, I'm sorry. That's I, at the regional I, plant. Oh. Yeah, that's at the regional plant. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought not you were referring to the Odom that's Street plant. My mistake. Do we have different an, an acronyms for them? Well, we call that the regional plant. Regional so we plant. probably, that, and that's a good thing going forward. We'll <laughs> need to start distinguishing regional from the Odom Street. So Sure. You and old. <laughs> yeah. So that's, yeah. Yeah. that's a yep. good comment. Okay. So again, similar to the general fund, we have some CIP projects in the water and wastewater fund. North Heights utility project phase five for 1.2 million. And again, the water tower number six re rehab project for 1 million. North Heights utilities phase five consists of replacing uh, or rehabbing the water and sanitary sewer lines in the Guadalupe Street between Cameron and Laurent uh, in portions of Cameron East, Goldman, Jecker, Levi, and Lewis Street for 1.2 million. Uh, in addition, we have some emergency pipe replacement for a total of 500000 So looking at our budget development criteria, for fiscal year 2018, our current rates, using our current rates, we're predicting revenue of about $26.5 million. 250 of that is contingent on the sale of the Willow Street property. Uh, at this point, staff is, is not rec recommending a rate increase for fiscal year 2018. However, we are working with a third-party consultant to look at our current rate structure, our tier structure. Uh, that says we anticipate bringing it back to you in spring of 2019. That's my mistake. It's actually spring of 2018. It's not going to take us two years to do that work. Um, uh, but uh, we're looking to make sure that our... Uh, current revenues are covering our current expenditures and uh, that our current rate structure is appropriate for, for what we're doing at this time. Uh, oh, I just want to clarify something, and it's more for the public and the media. The So you're recommending no rate increases for the water rates and the sewer rates. Yes, ma'am. Daryl recommended no increases yesterday for the solid waste rates. Okay. So I just clarify. Uh, Fine, instead of lumping those together. Yeah, so. thank you. I appreciate that clarification. Before you go any further, I, your um, emergency pipe replacement. Mm -hmm. you, yes, sir. You, you're putting five hundred thousand there. Yes, sir. It's comparable with past years. I suppose. Yes, that's about what we put every year. Same, is it? Yeah. It's, okay. it's been that way for I don't know You've how been, many years. How's it compared to actual? Uh, you're pretty close. Yes, we we use that. That uh, it, it's amazing. Uh, Especially during high, high rainfall events, we have a lot of uh, sewer lines that collapse. Uh, large water li uh, lines blow out. Just uh, um, unfor unfortunately, we can't predict that. So, uh, okay. typically, we use that money every year. Okay. Uh, the proposed budget recurring revenues are greater than recurring expenses. Uh, we are meeting a three month uh, reserve requirement, and all bond debt coverage requirements are satisfied. According to Gilbert. <laughs> All right. And then finally, I wanted to give you a, a little overview of some of the items that uh, we're not accomplishing at this time uh, due to budget cuts and, and shortfalls. The first of which is drainage. Um, you know, we're no longer performing our outfall maintenance uh, involving, you know, major dirt work such as sloping and shaping. We are, we are hitting small maintenance projects, and when we find a problem, we, we address it as quickly as we can. Um, there, there's no immediate emergency, but it is something that, that we really need to look at is uh, there's some erosion issues we need to address and there's some uh, overgrown brush that we need to pull out. And uh, uh, I, I plan to come back before you with a way to address that in the future. Traffic control, uh, in this fiscal year, we cut out $250,000 in our annual striping program uh, uh, because of budget shortfalls. And uh, I anticipated trying to put it back in for fiscal year 2018, and we just couldn't find the room for it. So we will definitely strive to put it in for fiscal year 2019. On the water side... Um, uh, let me... About how much striping would that be? Can, can you have an estimate on that linear footage? 
For three years in a row, we had a striping program of about 250000 and that pretty much covered the city. We, we did it in three phases, and we've got the crosswalks, all the major arterials, and streets done. So it's seven fifty. So we did how many years? Three, I, three. We did three years in a row. So this was starting back around? This yeah. would be the we could that, <clears throat> next year we could start back up again and okay. start with the ones we did the first phase. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, on the water side, this is a this is a minor issue. It's only forty thousand dollar program, but uh, back in 05, we started a uh, program to uh, perform scheduled maintenance on our scheduled replacement of our large uh, valves and sleeves in the water distribution system. Uh, we kept that going until about 2017, and it was it was an item that uh, we felt we could do without for a year. Again, we left it out for fiscal year 2018 because of budget constraints. And, and uh, in the following year, 2019, we don't anticipate having a, a million dollar water tower rehab, so we should be able to slide this back in pretty easily. On the CIP side, uh, we removed uh, um, North Side Road uh, annexation phase two. We actually removed that uh, in uh, fiscal year 27, this current fiscal year, with the hopes that we could slide it back in in 2018, but that's just not going to be possible. And this project is basically upsizing an eight inch sanitary sewer line that runs in Ball Airport between Millette and Glasgow, upsizing that to a 15 inch, which would help us scalp some of the flow off of the north side of, uh, of Victoria that currently runs down Navarro and goes to the Navarro lift station. This would pull that, that flow over to the uh, Spring Creek lift station and then allow us to move it over on the west side and go to the Odom Street wastewater treatment plant, helping us take some of that burden off of that Navarro lift station right now. It, did Berkman do that, the Berkman diversion? Berkman did, did move some of the flow, but this was kind of another piece of that okay. to help take even more okay. flow off. Second phase. Second. Oh, yeah, it says phase two, okay, yes. of that same project. Thank right. you. And then finally, uh, last item is, if you remember, we came to you with the CIP project for, uh, for Crestwood, and y'all asked us at that time to see if we could move the phasing in a different manner. For, uh, to, originally, we proposed moving from the west side to the east side of, of rehabbing uh, Crestwood. Came back to us and asked if it would be possible to start on the east and move west. We looked at it and found that, yes, it's definitely possible, but in order to do that, we had to find about $775,000. Uh, we recommend that we, to cover that, we uh, uh, postpone uh, Vine Street from Mockingbird to Red River, or at least a portion of it, to 2020. And I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you said your expenses are going to be $26.8 million, and yes, according to your chart? Yes, ma'am. And then you have the revenues is twenty six point two million, so we have a shortfall of six hundred thousand dollars. Are we getting that? That's a recurring. Recur oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you got to take out your one time expenditures. So that's just one time. That's a uh, uh, recurring expenditures only. So should it be the twenty five point two million dollars then in the page before for your budget expense? Are you saying that's the actual expenditure, yeah, the, the 25, not the 26 on the next page? Yes, that's our, that's our total expenditures for everything. Our recurring expenditures are 25242 So if you at the, the uh, page on the screen right now, you've got total expenditures of 26 million seven hundred ninety nine thousand. But you pull out your back out your one time expenditures. You have recurring expenditures of twenty twenty five million two forty two, and our recurring revenues are greater than our recurring expen expenses. I very little. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Donald. Yes, sir. Could we go back to that uh, study we're talking about? Uh, uh, that would be uh, yeah the third party rate study. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess I'm seeing here that we're not doing valve replacing and a bunch of other things. And the rates that we charge to the customer should cover our expenses. Yes, sir. They should. I'm seeing that it doesn't look like they are. In this rate study, would that, 
include cities that do charge for this recurring maintenance or try to defer or calculate these known maintenances are going to be staring you in the face and charge for them proactively. I feel like we're getting caught behind the, the power curve on this at times when something fails and we got to come up with the money. That money should already be there because it was factored in. You know that this gonna this device or this piece of line is gonna last a given number of years. Right. That that, that is that is one of the uh, one of the things that we want this consultant to tell us is is are we collecting enough revenue to cover our anticipated cost even into the future? Okay. I just see in this budget year, it looks like we might have missed the boat a little here, and I'm hoping the rate study perhaps would reveal what I think, we, what I we believe, need to be doing. Yes, sir, I believe it will. Okay. So it Thank looks you. like we're really going to be real tight. In other words, you know, you have enough just to cover the recurring expenses, right? Yes, ma'am, we have enough to cover our recurring expenses, wow. which, is, which is usually what we're striving to do. Okay. And the debt coverage ratio is good. Right. Right, and so, our and our reserve is met, yes. so we're I, we're 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 looking pretty good. Okay. Can you go to to the second uh, to the last slide? The bottom, Move Mine Street. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Can you explain that one more time for sure. me? Sure. Um, we came to you in April of 2017 with CIP program, and part of that was uh, Crestwood Drive rehab, and we have three phases of Crestwood, and we we're going to start on the west side which is basically Vine Street, I'm, I'm sorry, Main Street to uh, Navarro. Navarro. Then from Navarro. Navarro, we'd go to Laurent and then Laurent to Ben Jordan. At that time, council asked if it would be possible to flip phase one and phase two. And yes, it is possible, but phase, I'm sorry, I said that wrong, flip phase one and phase three. Mm -hmm. And that is possible, but phase three is about seven, $775,000 more expensive than phase one. So we had to find that money in 2018. And the way to do that would be to defer Vine Street from Mockingbird to Red River or a part of it back to 2020 so we have that, that <coughs> funding to cover the additional 775. So to accommodate the, the additional request, it's yes, costing sir. us. Yeah, that, well, it's, it's just shifting it around is all it's doing. That's just one item we're just going to defer down to 2020 in order to cover that. And it, it may not even have to be all of it. It could be a portion of it. Hmm. It's just taking $700,000 out of there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the phasing, we can, we can go either direction from a construction standpoint. You just don't want to start in the middle and then work your way out. So either way is fine. Thank you. Ricky, are you thinking of postponing Vine? Is that the concern there with the Vine Street? And we have talked about, because we won't spend all the money that was allocated for Vine, there may be some left over. And once we get some projects underway, we may be able to do a portion of Vine once we see what some of those bids come back in. So we've not forgotten about Vine until 2020. So we, we are keeping that on the radar. Absolutely. Especially part of it is really bad on bond. I guess that is the only positive thing we can say about an economic downturn is the bids come in lower. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We've seen some come in yeah. higher, too. So. <laughs> yeah. But we sometimes talk about not, um, not doing just a part of a street, both because of, I guess, the disruption in the area, also the, the cost of breaking a street that could be done as one project into yeah. two. Remobilizing. So, yeah, we're, so we're kind of talking both out of both sides of our mouth when we talk about moving Vine up. But I'm sure you'll look at the, the cost and the differential. Yes, ma'am. Also, maybe do it with another project, too. So. Oh, okay. I mean, we, and it's, you've got some intersections there that it's a good place to... Stop, right. you know, uh, not like we're stopping in the middle of a block. We do it at intersection. So, yeah, but you're right. I mean, we try, if we've got the money, we'd like to do it all. But it's a matter of if you don't have the money, what can you do with the money that you've got? So, um, 
you so your revenue sources in your wastewater department, obviously the monthly bills we all pay, and then you've got sale of the Willow Street property, one-time cash, and then is there, there was some proceeds from Del Norte in, in this fund? That's on the general fund no, side. That was on the general fund, fund side. Okay, yes, sir. so it's just it's it's a little difficult in some of these discussions sometimes when we're commingling. You know, not everyone understands the difference between the sources of revenue. So you're you won't be issuing any debt from this fund. Okay, so that's different. And you know, when when we get to Councilman Halapasco was talking about, um, in particular, forty thousand a year that sleeve replacement for the valves and stuff. Right. You know that why isn't that covered? Why isn't that built into our bill? We pay. Well, it's not. It may be a different source, obviously. And so it, it gets a little. And I, I guess I'm really just talking to council. It can get a little confusing at times. I um, think we. For the public, too, we have to remember water and wastewater is an enterprise fund. It right. does not take property tax or sales tax dollars. It's mm -hmm. purely funded by the fees that we charge for that mm -hmm. water and sewer bill. And then so, we and Gilbert's standing up. He doesn't like my explanation. Well, and then we, <laughs> we issue debt based upon that revenue. We do. Never. Never. <laughs> Love your explanation. Yeah, thank you. So if we have to short our budget because it wasn't covering our costs, the question is I hope that the study will show where we're lacking, and show us which direction to go. And we do that study about every three years, don't we? Not an outside consultant. We've done that internal for... We always uh, done internal. Yeah, because yeah, remember Emmett had asked a long time ago that we needed to do yeah. an outside study. That, that was the initiation of this conversation, right. yes. Mm -hmm. Going back to the comment about, you know, what's in there, not in there. You know, Donald submits a budget knowing what he needs to have operating within that given year. Now, if you're looking at recurring versus... Uh, expenses versus revenue, you, you got about close to half a million dollars in difference delta. The reason why there's a delta there is we just in case something pops up throughout the year that was not accounted for or budgeted during the process, we can go back and adjust that. We never want to get a point where revenues and expenses equal each other because, as Ms. Garrett was saying, this is an enterprise fund. It has to hold, operate on itself. So do I like to have that reserve a little bigger? <laughs> yeah, but there's a tax rate involved there. But we've been operating this philosophy for a while. And back to the, the rate structure, you know, the consultant is going to look at all angles. He's going to look at the whole structure itself. Can we kind of move it around and possibly generate a different type of revenue stream, larger amount of money, meaning? Does that make sense? So back to the Don, you know, he puts everything he needs for that budget operation for that fiscal year. You know, they might, but we have that little cushion there, the half a million dollar difference in Delta to pick up those little items that maybe we need during the year. Does that hopefully explains that? All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thanks, good, Tom. good Thank presentation. You, so. Finance is next. Gilbert. You have no, uh, 10 minutes, you said? Actually, uh, uh, 17. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, according to the, the paper, all due respect, I mean, I love the article. You're, you're supposed to have an expert up here, and it's just me. So just, <laughs> I'm just, no I'm just have a disclaimer there, I first of all. <laughs> Do you have a handout, Gilbert? Handout. Officer, please, oh, sir. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I, I thought there was. <laughs> just, no. It's just numbers. We don't need a handout. <laughs> no, actually, I was going to just do Miss Scott a, 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 you know, a surprise. Surprise. No, no handout. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's, all, he's handing out the handout. It looks kind of thick, folks, and don't panic. There's a lot of information there. It's mostly for reference only, okay? And I'm not going to hit a lot of that. I might hit it for a couple of seconds and move on. So it's more for reference when you can go back and take a look at it and figure out, okay, what exactly Gilbert said about this slide. So do not panic about the thickness of the I, I said 10 minutes and look at it. Hey. It I, says 10 minutes in your Dilbert cartoon. I know. <laughs> when we first started this process in early 2017, you know, I knew we were looking at a downfall in sales tax. I knew property tax value is probably flat. And I was getting a little nervous, but moving on through the months, you know, we're faced with these challenges. You know, one is that we want to continue with our core services, as Ms. Gary was talking about yesterday. Not only that, you know, we also want to try to do a pay program. And fortunately, you know, staff, you know, they 
took to the plate and kind of helped us in finding some cuts and everything else. Not only that, it took us also an opportunity to start thinking out of the box of some of these programs. You know, we start looking in, in general funds programs and so what items, what programs within the general fund can be possible move to another fund core services that to provide almost the same, it identifies the same <coughs> relationship. And there's two, basically. You know, the sweeping program, and I'll get into the more in and about it, is one is that if you think about it, and the more and more I research after the seed was planted in my head by Miss Garrett and watered by Donald, I did a lot of research on it. And it's like, you know, bottom line, what that program is doing is help keep our storm drainage and our waterway clean. So there's a huge impact indirectly related to our water fund operation. So it's okay. But I left a little bit, and I'll get into in a minute, in the general fund side for debris and all that that we're collecting off the street. The second program, environmental. We need a lot mowing and demolition. It, it's an environmental issue, and also it helps us reduce the cost in general fund and put in general fund and in environmental services because, as you know, we had cost reduction. So we got lucky. So it fits. Those two items are being proposed by a city manager in this budget and how we move it around. Okay? Now, before I keep going, just a disclaimer. This budget, as of today, is a work in progress. And y'all seen these slides before, so just bear with me. Um, the numbers are still going to be fine-tuned to, uh, to, to July. And, of course, uh, July 25th is when I get the ta official certified tax rule. But prior to that, I'll be getting weekly reports from John, which I'm going to drive him crazy. But anyway, and, of course, the city manager will be submitting a balanced budget. So what we're going to do tonight as I said in prior years, we're going to slice and dice this budget. We're going to take it from all inclusive, no matter what category it is. If it's a one-time expense, new program, whatever, we can show you that picture. And I'm going to bring it down to a baseline. Remember, baseline is like, what are your recurring expenditure core services that we provide? And compare that where we left off last year and show you what the increase and decrease Overall, I know you, throughout yesterday and today, yesterday, y'all saw each department, but I'm kind of bringing it in together, and you show it as one lump numbers. And of course, after that, we're going to talk about new program, at many, uh, one-time expenses, jump into the revenue side, and then talk about what we plan, what we project for year in balance. Okay, the 2018 budget, as of today. Is approximately $48.3 million. I'm not planning to go through each one line, but I just want to give you the, the way I'm presenting this are in division. I want to make sure you understood that. It's that public safety, you got fire, PD, municipal court, public works, street, engineering. I'm missing one, engineering, traffic. General administrative is legal, city manager, finance, HR, PIO, city secretary. Developments is uh, planning, GIS, uh, administration, inspection, code enforcement, of course, library is library, park is park. Non-departmental, I don't know if you recall, but that's just, if anything don't fit in those departments or division, it's put over there. For example, allocation to the zoo, for, that's an example, okay? Now, when you compare the 2018 budget to the 2017 budget as a whole, all inclusive, we have a decrease of about 920 $8,000, okay? I'm not going to state too much in this slide, but I want to go, is go through the, each one of these. Public safety saw an increase of $270,000. Public works a decrease of one eighty one. dollars Parks and rec, $389,000 decrease. Uh, general administration service, a decrease of $28,000. Development services, $76,000. Library services, $26,000. Non-departmental, $506,000, mainly because of that YMCA slash city pool project. So you got a total of 48.29 versus 49.2.2. You have a delta decrease of $928,000. That's a 1.9% decrease. Now, in order to understand the $928,000 decrease, this is where the slice and dice come into play. You guys figure out what's your one-time expenses, what's your baseline, current baseline versus last year's, and what are the new programs we're talking about. So let's do that. As I mentioned before, the all-inclusive 2018 budget is 28.29. Last year, approved budget was 
point two two. You have a delta of nine twenty. Forty eight forty nine. Oh, what else? 4820. I'm trying to get less revenue. Okay. Uh, 49.22 million. We need all we can get. We can get all we can get. <laughs> exactly right. But anyway, that's, that's where I left off last slide. Now, let's take out the one time expenses. The 2018 were proposing about $2.4 million. Last year was $1.9. So now we got a recurring budget for 2018 of $45.9 million versus last year's of 47.3. But we're not through. Let's take out new proposed programs. New proposed program is 345,000, which I'll get in a minute. So you take that out. Now you're looking at baseline to baseline of this year's 2018 of $45.5 million to last year's baseline, which is finalized of 47.3 you have a delta reduction in cost of $1.8 million, of 3.7%. Does that make sense, how that flows? So that's where we want to start. Let's, and, and from this point on, we're going to start dissecting into that number, OK? Any questions? Good. All right, let's talk about, and I'm going to give you different layers, so bear with me. I might go fast in the beginning, and then I'll slow down in a minute. Public safety on baseline to baseline, now, Stated this way, you look at a $169,000 decrease. Public works, $1.2 million decrease. Parks and Rec, $256,000 decrease. General Administration, $51,000. Development Services, $106,000. Library Services, $33,000. Non-departmental, $15,000. And there's your $1.8 million delta baseline to baseline. Now. Let's get into a little deeper. Excuse me. All right, public safety, we say it went down by $168,000. How do I move? Thank you. Go to that slide 37, I don't have mine. So this slide, this is one of the back slides, tells you what that number is made up of, okay? On the payroll, we had $309,000. Basically on public safety, when you Look at all the pay program, I mean, excuse me, all staff and everything else, compare from the beginning to end, you adjust all the numbers for the new individuals. Some people might retire, so you put a new budget number and everything else. You got $284,000 decrease, along with the benefit and taxes adjustments to that 56,000. Fire department, as you mentioned yesterday, we had a 55,000 increase in certified pay. Workman's comp decreased by $25,000. Down to the m and side, you got $86,000 increase, which is the net result of the items I listed right there. The biggest one you're looking at is you got an increase in vehicles, mainly on PD side, $72,000. Increase in software, that BW means ticket rider and body camera, that's just for me. And uh, we have a net increase in terms of charges of $33,000. On the capital, we had an increase of $55,000. And of course, majority of that is on the computer equipment and machinery equipment. Let's okay. remind everybody what internal service charges internal are. Internal services are charges that are, uh, let, me, let me just go to a simple one. Yesterday, Daryl was up here telling me about we have a contract for our fleet. They charge out a fee. The contract might be $1.2 million. Well, we have to pay that contract some way. That contract is allocated across support to the various departments or funds based on the vehicles they have associated to the service in this contract. So in PD side and fire, of course, we've got big apparatus. There's a cost a little higher. There's a big chunk of that 33 is related to that service <clears throat> contract. In there, you also maybe have overhead for the operation of the VS department. Does that make sense? IT is another internal services, OK? Does that suffice? Yes, okay. Thank you for the reminder. I need to go Slide 13, let's go back. Now let's go to the next division. Click, oh me, I'm sorry, I thought you were doing this now for me. <laughs> Public works. Here we have a $1.2 million deduction and hit the slide 39. And here is the whole shebang here. On payroll side, of course, we had a $46,000, $47,000 decrease. As Donald mentioned, we had, we're proposing to eliminate one engineer inspector position, okay? that's makes up the bulk of it all. On the m and side, which is $1.1 million, light and power is reduced by approximately 665000 Just a refresher. 
The city has entered into a new contract where it will take effect January the 1st, 2018. So in the 2018 budget, I only have nine months of cost reduction. We still got October, November, December. So the full effect won't come into play to 2019. But we're going from about 7.9 cents a kilowatt down to 3. Point, I'll say 8% kilowatt. So it's a pretty good chunk coming down. And I'm going to qualify that. It all depends on the kilowatt usage. So that, that might vary throughout the year. Um, the next thing is the street maintenance program was reduced by 539. We're not taking nothing away. We presented a plan to the council, and that's the end result. $539,000 is reduced. Uh, the big thing here is the street sweeping program, which I mentioned, um, slide 44. And basically, you know, <clears throat> logically, core is the right answer. We have a sales tax reduction in, in revenue. That kind of prompted the whole thing to start looking in different ways. We want a, a pay program. But like I said, when I start looking at, at documents, reading research and all that, everything points to the quality of, of strong water runoff and keeping the waterway Healthy. So that's why we're proposing that we allocate the costs of this program, 80% through water fund and 20% to general fund. Now, if you're asking me how I came up with those numbers, I won't tell you. I just pulled it out of the air. But to me, from a logic standpoint, majority of that function, to me, I feel like it's a water issue deal. So that's why I put more weight on the water fund than the general fund. Could I move everything? Yeah, I probably could move everything, but I think we have some trash on the streets. I thought maybe we need to keep, you know, be fair about it, too, as well. The other choices, you know, you cut the program or you raise taxes. Just being frank. Does that make sense? Slide. Uh, yes, ma'am, go back. I, I must have missed something in what you were talking about. Sure. Um, go back to the go previous back. slide. I followed what you were talking about with street sweeping, but... Um, what did you say? What's the statement with proposing a step pay program for police and fire within this? Oh, the, my, my, the whole deal was that, you know, we had some headwinds. You know, I have a huge uh, deficit in revenue that I have a reduction. I got to deal with that. Also, we want to do a pay program, you know, the, the step plan and the stipend. But in order to do this, we got to be creative how and start looking at different businesses within the general fund. How can we move some of these programs out to another fund that has the same core service of a program and not creating hardship on those funds as well. And I'm suggesting this was one of them, the street program, where we allocate 80-20, accordingly 82 water and 20 to general fund. Does that help, Ms. Scott? We're just trying to get I'm just somewhere. trying to tell you the reason why this is being done. The relief to the general fund. We Correct. were looking for revenue, uh, expense relief to the general fund, and where we could actually allocate things that made sense to other funds. To balance the fund. And, that, and yeah, the priority was trying to get some additional money for pay programs. Okay. So, at, at reoccurring, and that's why he's just listing the step play program because it's reoccurring cost. Right. I was just like, trying that's to... the thought process. Yes. That's not these are the, the bullets of what we're going to no, do. That no, was no, no. That's, um, I was just, okay. th again, this is just my. We're brained. I needed to put it down in bullets, and I was just trying to explain my logic how this came about. It, it's reasonable. It's it's you know we used to back in the day when we were robbing the closure fund for the landfill for other stuff that was totally. I, well, I shouldn't say totally. It was not that related. This is. I get it. Yeah. Did we have to pay it back? This is a very reasonable. We did. Uh -oh. It wasn't me. <laughs> Was Hello? <laughs> okay. And during my research, actually, matter of fact, I, you know, there's several cities that actually has this in an in a, in a enterprise fund, and they actually have a, a rate associated to this service as well. You know, so you know, the reason why it was a general fund, you're probably asking the whole question, you know, during the past four years, we were fortunate to have the sales tax, you know, coming in, and that's how this new program was developed back in the early 12, and it's kept going with it. Now they kind of dipped down. We're just trying to find a different avenue where to put the cost at. But anyway, any, Ms. God, did I, you have a frown? I don't make sure you... Uh, just keep going. It usually comes clear after a while. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> okay. If not, just get to me later. Uh, I think we... Wrap. Okay, based on the last one, I want to make sure everybody knows. We did decrease the drainage mowing 
uh, about 24,000 because, you know, we, we had some talk, at least council had talked to drain district number three about doing several more ones out there. So uh, that's just an estimate. It might be more, but we're being conservative. Okay. Can you go back to slide 13? Next division, which would be parks, I believe. Oh, me. Thank you. Forgot. Parks. We had a net three decrease of 256. There, payroll. Your phone up there or something? Uh, you know, is that broken? I'm not sure. Okay, I, I won't. Give me drive. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, payroll, sixty-eight thousand dollars decrease. Majority of that, we're eliminating one park position. Plus, not only that, uh, Kobe. Thank you. And another staff uh, who does a lot of work at the community center, cost was allocated portionally to the community center fund. Okay. Of course, we also had an increase in uh, temporary pay of 18,000, decrease in overtime, 12,500. That's a net decrease for the overall pay for <coughs> Parks Department. On the M&O side, of course, we had the light and power. That's about $37,000. And there were a bunch of accounts that added about $50,000. I just lumped it in there. On the capital side, basically, other structure decreased by 26,000. And the equipment, which mainly more than we bought a year ago, this year, excuse me, $82,500. Stuart, I want to make a comment about Absolutely. You're talking about uh, eliminated positions. There was no employees in these positions that were eliminated, so Thank no you. one lost a job on any of these that we're talking about. Thank you for clearing that up there vacant. I'll go back. General administration, we had about $51,000 reduction. Here, oh, I can't find you. On the, personnel, on the personnel side, we had about $49,000. Basically, we, two retirees, we had one in building services and one in custodial, makes up the majority of that cost. Of course, uh, thank you for the contribution of Mr. Joe Garza. He's not eligible for the city benefits. That was about $14,000. <laughs> it all helps. It all helps, absolutely. <laughs> on the m side, even though it went down, increased on about $2,700, the biggest increase Is it $60,000? Excuse me. That's a good point. Uh, uh, Mayor was asking me, is that because he's at a call? Yes, he's paid Employed his full-time job or paid job is with a state entity, so public money. So that's why he's not eligible you for that. can't get public money from two sources. So, yeah. so I'm, the thank, only, I'm the only true volunteer. Thank you for your there service. You go. <laughs> so let that be known for the record. <laughs> that was kind of harsh. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Okay. Um, on the uh, M&O side, uh, I mean, though we went up by $27. Uh, the biggest ticket there is, of course, we have an election in 2018. Uh, we had $60,000 in there. Okay. Try and speed it up a little bit. On development services, we had a $106,000 reduction. If I can drive right. The biggest part of this department or division is that, again, we moved approximately 110, actually now it's 120 environmental cell, but we moved that cost center, I mean, sorry, program over into the environmental service. That's the main reason why that went down by $106,000. Library went, uh, had a reduction overall of $33,000. You know, payroll, $480. But the biggest part here is just your electricity and the computer computer replacement were reduced, basically. There's nothing major item to note. I wish I could try this a little better. There we go. None department went, went up by $1,600. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's because our TML insurance premium went up. So overall, you had personal reduction $773,000. M&O side, $1.2 million reduction. On the capital, you had a net $60,000. That explains your $1.8 million baseline and baseline reduction. Okay? Any questions? I'll move on. I'll move on to the new programs that we're suggesting to add. Basically, the total cost is $345,000. Now, that's not true. 
let me rephrase that. The total cost of this pay program, which is strictly the fire, you need to get Okay. The total cost for the fire and PD step pay program is $466,000. Okay. That's the total cost. But from a cash perspective, they're going to be paid out on an anniversary day. So you got to figure out what is really how much you're going to pay out in this fiscal year. The actual cost that's going to be paid out is $345,000, which means I got a $121,000 that I have account for next year. This is a test of your ability to, <laughs> now you to look continue like a, talking when everything's going on around you. <laughs> Did this work? <laughs> okay. It we won't count it, this against your time, it, Gilbert. It has to be my presentation. <laughs> it was rigged. It's rigged. Okay. If you hold it, you'll look like Bob so, Barker. <laughs> I'm tell you about the price. Well, let me let me start again on this. I think Miss Scott had a question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a lot of interaction. Okay, the total cost for the police and fire step pay step pay program is four hundred sixty six thousand dollars. That's if you had to pay that January first all the way through December. Okay, within a or. September, October 1st through September in one fiscal year, okay? However, they're going to be paid out on the anniversary date. For example, let's say I, I, I'm one of them, and I get paid out six months. My anniversary is in six months. So I won't get half of that allocation in 2018, and the remaining will be added to, not added, but I have to account for in the 19 budget. Does that make sense? And it's not calendar year that's doing it. It's anniversary day. Correct. So you get, but from my point, from a accrual base, I have to account. That amount is $121,000. And I'll show you how that's going to be taken care of. And there's two, two ways to do it, basically, is that you find the money next year or you account for it this year so you put it away so you can have it next year. Does that make sense? Okay. So as I mentioned before, public safety had a baseline of $26.8 million. If we add the $348,000 now, from a cost perspective, now you're looking at a baseline of $27.2 million versus last year, $27 million. Now we have, a, instead of a negative, we have an increase of $176,000. Okay? Now, any questions? I'm going to move on to one-time expenses. I'm not going to spend too much time. I'm just going to hit the highlights. On the left side, you got the 18 year, 17 is last year's. Of course, you have a variance on the right. I'm gonna focus more on the 18 side. Fire department. The biggest thing on fire department is $207,000, but the biggest part is $165,000 that's in that 174 for roof replacement at a fire station, as Tanner talked about yesterday or day before. I'm not sure. Police department, they get zip. Last year, they had $62,000. That was not intentionally, but that's the way it worked out. PIO department, uh, none. That sounds bad, but that's not what I meant. Street department, $1.8 million. Basically, as, Darryl, I mean, as Donald's mentioned, 1.4 is related to North High's phase four. And of course, we've got Springwood of $400,000. Plus, remember, you know, contingent upon Navarro the North being sold, that's your 1.2 and make up your 1.6 overall. If not, we'll come back and revisit the whole program itself. Let's go. Move it. Okay, it's not, not doing anything. Okay, there it goes now. Traffic department has zero. Engineer has zero. Gilbert, could I just. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Because I see that you've got the Tanglewood Level Up project. Let me and, go um, back up. I just wanted to comment. Uh, probably it's not your department as much as uh, the others, but I have had a couple of people come and start to thank me. We've, I've still got some that are not crazy about it, but um, just want to say I'm glad that well, I'm glad. To finish it. I, my department appreciate it. <laughs> Please pass it on to the others. I'll make sure. <laughs> Donald will start sending all the complaint calls to Gilbert. Please do. On the streets. <laughs> we have to laugh at these things sometimes. Yeah. Let's see, I was there, there. 
Oh, uh, bill and service has $12,000 for AC replacement. Library has zero this year. Uh, parks, of course, we talked about the uh, duck pond repair, $55,000. None department, hooray, our last payment was taken care. No more five hundred half a million dollars there. And of course, as we've been talking, the stipend pay, $334,000 effect for the general fund itself. So this year we're posting 2.4, last year 1.9, you have a delta of 800, I mean $484,000, okay? I wanna bring it back together, okay? So we started off last year, we're current baseline budget of, of $47.2 million. We went in there, we scrubbed, we did everything we could, we adjusted that baseline by $1.8 million. So we now have a beginning baseline for 2018 of 45.5. I wish the federal government worked this way, but it doesn't. They don't have you to be the leaders, that's why. They can't afford me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they could. The 2018 new recurring expenses is 345,000. As I mentioned, that's the step plan. We got one-time expenses 2.4. Now we're back to what we first started with in this presentation: a total proposed budget of 48.3 million dollars. Does everything looks kind of clear? Not too fuzzy, I hope. Okay. I'm going to move on. Not I'm going to the revenue side now. On the revenue side. Oh, I knew this was going to happen. <clears throat> okay, y'all have your handouts, I hope, because it, it didn't work out too good on my PowerPoint. Well, basically, sales tax is 31.8. Property taxes is 33.5. As you know, now property taxes uh, is higher than your sales tax. And uh, he, I wish it was the other way around. But, <laughs> Facts are the, the way they are. Franchise tax, uh, hopefully you know what I mean by franchise tax, Sutton Link, Waste Management, Republic, uh, Centerpoint, AT&T. Okay? Let me, let, let me get my, uh, I know y'all looking at it. I can't see. I think we need a new. There we go. The next one that's not up there is charges for services, ambulance, that's $1.9 million. Victoria County fire contract, 1.685, remember we increased it by 100,000. Fire, uh, fine and forfeitures, that's uh, municipal court revenue, $1.2 million. License and permits, $666,000. Intergovernmental, other, meaning that, for example, uh, sales tax corporation, Helps uh, pays the city for administration of some contracts. Uh, we got the youth sports complex in there, et cetera. That's $468,000. <laughs> Charges for services, uh, $334,000. And of course, miscellaneous of $335,000. So I apologize for the, the mess up on the PowerPoint here. If I can. <clears throat> okay, and now I won't go. Can you help me out, James? <laughs> okay, it went now. So, let's lay it. On the left-hand side, the 18 is revenue, 17 revenue is on the right-hand side. As you can see, the bottom line, we had a $1.3 million shortfall on the revenue, not shortfall, a decrease of 1.3, which equates to about 2.7%. As you can tell from above, 1.5 right now, what I'm currently projecting, is our, sh our shortage on the sales tax side. The $205,000 increase in property taxes, which I'll get into in a minute, is basically from new values being added. And I'll talk about it. Franchise tax, pretty flat. Other financing sources, 25,400. Basically, that's for the transfers. Uh, ambulance services, right now, is looking pretty good at $94,000. County fire contract, we increased it by $100,000. Finding forfeitures, down 95,000. License permits, for example, uh, building permits, plumbing, plumbing permits, mechanic, all that's down, about $70,000. Interlocal government, pretty flat. Charge for services, $32,000. And that's for a different type of camp. We got weed a lot, we increased about 24. Uh, escort service from the, from the fire, I mean, PD department was up a little bit, so that's with bulk of the money. Miscellaneous had a, a decrease of $1,500. I had an increase 
about 20 something, close to 30, but in there you had the VPI lease income that you get annually of $36,000, that's gone. The net result is that negative $1,500. I just want to make sure you understood. So I have accounted for that lease taken out of the budget. Any questions? Now, you've seen this graph before. I'm going to go through it real quick. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But basically, the red line is your original budget. The blue line is your actual, actual receipts of sales tax. The green line is projection. After a few months, I get them back, and I start projecting it again. We had a recession between the eight fiscal year 2018 through the latter part of 2010. Then, of course, as you will, next five years, from 11 to 15, we have the Eagle Force acti activity. Right now, our budget in 2017 is set at 16.2. I'm projecting 14.5, which, of course, is a reduction of about $1.7 million. Next year, I'm looking at about a 1.37% increase. I'll go through that line by line and explain that to you. But what's key to this point is, as you can tell, for the past five years, we enjoyed a pretty good increase in our sales tax, close to $4 million. Well, that's kind of now gone back to the pre, back in, prior to 2011, basically. But what's, you know, we can sit here and say, well, we wish I had the money back, but you know what? Uh, kudos to council during that time because one, we were able to use that money wisely. We, know, we did have some recurring expenses. We had maybe one or two pay programs. We also increased our reserves big time during that period. We took advantage of that. And also we used the majority of the money <clears> on one-time <throat> expenses. So throughout the years, we were able to present a balanced budget. Even today, we're giving you a balanced budget. So, you know, there's a lot of cities out there trying to figure out how they're going to fill the gaps. But we were fortunate to manage our funding through those years. I wish the money was there. But at least we manage ourselves. City manager and council did an excellent job. That's what I want to make point out in this graph. Well, let's go back to the sales tax. Last week, Andrew was up here talking about the new method, how we're going to look at sales tax. Prior years, we took this number. We try to look at the trend, and we threw a number at the percent increase. We've been kind of lucky. But as you will, the couple of years with this oil and gas industry, fluctuation, the sales tax isn't coming in too good. So we capitalized and trying to get more of a detailed information like Andrew was mentioning just last week up here. So we went through each category and each one will be presented here and in our logic how we came to our conclusion what we're looking at for 2018. For example, arts, amusement, sport, sport, uh, sports, excuse me. I'm projecting for 17 year about 120. Next year, 121. I gave it a 1% increase, but it's pretty flat. So we look at, oh, oh, construction, same logic there. Um, it's pretty flat. Okay. Finance insurance, flat, 1%, $3,000. $3, Restaurant and foods. Now, once we start getting into the big numbers, I backed off on my 1%. I backed down to 0.75. Call me conservative. Because 1% on 1.5 is a big difference than just a, a, a quarter less. So I want to be a little bit conservative here. So that's kind of flat. Information media, I left it at 1% because for some reason or other, they're doing great. Manufacturing and uh, warehousing, pretty flat. Now, oil and gas, let's talk about it real quick. Last week we talked about there was, when Andrew was up here presenting information, there was a lot of audit adjustments that relates to prior mm -hmm. years. So what I decided to do in moving forward, I had to dig into that information, extract those audit adjust, adjustments, I think there were over $200,000, $300,000 in entries, and say I don't have a, I have a 0% increase, and whatever the actual collection I had in 2017 will be reflected the same in 2018, Hopefully, there's no more audit entries. So that means, if I, when I did that process, that means I come up with eight hundred fifty-six thousand dollars. That's why it's showing eleven percent increase. And now that I'm increasing it by eleven percent, that means I have it taken out those audit entries that were related to prior years had no relevance to the current year activity, and reflect the number of what they should be reflected moving forward. Does that make sense? 
Hey, Scott. So in other words, let's say $100,000 is what I collected this year. But in that number, I might have had a $50,000 of an audit entry that relates to prior year's information data. So it's not fair moving forward that I won't have the same $100,000. I, I need to reduce $50,000 from this $100,000 because it doesn't relate to this year's activity. So that means for this year activity, I have $50,000 of activity related. So in projecting forward, I use that 50, not 100. Does that make sense? The same thing reverse. If I had a $50,000 at $100,000 uh, negative adjustment, I do the same thing in moving forward. So I want to get the numbers pure where what's the actual current base of collections for that year? Extracting, removing all the other stuff that shouldn't be in there that the uh, comptroller kind of took away. Okay. And hoping that they're not able to do it again. Well, I, I hope. But, 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 you know, when we go back and look at this data, 90, over 90% of these data is during those four years. A lot of activity that happened in those four years, they're going back and, and recover some of that money that they reported wrong or what the case might be. Because every time we look at this auto entry, it's back to two, three, four years prior. It's nothing that's happened past 2010. So it's in that time frame. So, and you're right, roll the dice, hope it's no more. Okay, another way to say it is that if I didn't have that audit entry, that $770,000 would have been a million dollars. But it took away. I gotta accept it. Okay, professional service is pretty flat. Trade, I backed off, I didn't do the 1%, I only do 0.75%. Transportation, pretty flat. Utilities, flat, and of course, wholesale trade, flat. So bottom line, I'm looking at about $14.55 million projected for this year. Next year, only $14.65, which is increase about $198,000. That's your 1.37%. And of course, that circle is that 75% of your downfall between 16 and 17 is related to the oil. Okay, any questions? Now, anybody wants to dig into the numbers, I got worksheet. They'd be happy. Show you. Okay, let's talk property tax. I know Paul's waiting for this for a long time. I already looked ahead. I don't see. Huh? That's, that's what the problem is when you hand these things out. You know, probably Jeff went back there too and looked at it. Okay, let's go through the motions. <laughs> All right, property taxes as of today, and I explain this logic in a minute. I'm expecting a net appraised tax value increase of 0.57. How did I come up with that logic? Okay. Oh, that didn't go. Okay. All right. What we have here, if you're looking at the slide on the left-hand side column, last year on July 25th, 16, we were presented a certified value for 2016 tax row. At that time, we had a... 3.65 billion tax row, okay? I asked John for the same tax row, but as of June 5th, 2017, that same tax row, tax row is now 3.6347 billion. That's a reduction of $17.3 million in value. So I'm starting off my 2017 tax row in a negative, a half percent. Does that make sense? That's, I'm working through my logic. So if I thought, you know, I'm going to stop there. Have I looked at recent ones? Yes, I looked at recent ones. And I went through it, studied it. And it first started, came out, beginning of the month was about 3% increase. I said, okay, I can't believe that yet. A couple of weeks later, it's at two something. So they're fine tuning it. Is it possible to come in at 1%, maybe slightly one and a half, or, or maybe 0.5 higher than mine? Yes, it could. But my logic in this, if I establish myself saying I would have a zero base increase on the new values, oh, I mean, excuse me, on the old values, so I'm really, whatever the budget number is, I'm making my effective tax or work for me. So if I come in higher by a percentage, well, guess what? My effective tax rate will drop. I got a higher value. I would generate more revenue to offset whatever it is. So overall, my balance within this budget framework would still be in balance. Does that make sense? 
look at it the other way. If I came in and said, oh, I expect 2% increase, I don't get my 2% increase. Guess what? I got to scramble and start looking for cuts. So I hope that explains my logic. So I'm going in there right now. Cross my fingers, maybe we get a 1% increase, but right now I'm, I'm sticking with a zero flat. In addition to that, looking at the data from John, and, we'll, and it's showing about $39.5 million in new improvements. Years ago, that number was around $85 million. That's pretty sad. But it is what it is. But I shaved off a little bit. Usually always, by the end of the year, when they submit, it's always a little lower, so I took $38 million. So you're looking about, if you compare that number to what I'm proposing right now to work with, 3.7 billion, I'm looking at increase about 0.57%, $21 million value increase. Of course, the majority of that is due to the fact of the new improvements. Does that make sense, my logic? Okay, let's go back to the slide. So for 2018, based on those assumptions, we're looking at a tax rate of 59.15, M&O is 33.98, increase of 0.13 cents. Debt service, 25.17 cents, increase of 0 0.1, um, excuse me, 0.10. Let me stop there and I won't get out of the general fund mode and go into debt service mode. Okay. In my debt service, I'm projecting a deficit of $198,000. I'm okay with that right now. I have over a million dollars in reserve. Let me explain how that deficit occurred. I don't know if you recall, but years ago, the downtown utility power plant were given an abatement, about fifty some thousand dollars. As you will also know that that plant was bellied up. You don't have that abatement anymore. So that comes off our tax roll. But the bad part is that when that abatement was in place, we issued debt with the assumption those abatements would come in play down the road. Does that make sense to you? The abatement gone, I mean, because you expect the abatement to come in, you have the debt capacity. Years ago, we did issue debt with assumption in place. So with that abatement is no longer there, caused that <laughs> deficit 198. The other option, you raise tax. I think we don't want to do that right now. I'm rolling the dice. Hopefully next year, their appraised values will pick up and help me with that offset. Does that make sense? Scott? It makes perfect sense, but I'm not following the numbers. The, oh. the 198. 190. Oh, no, it's not on here. Okay. It's not. It's, I, I, just, I follow what you're saying. I, I'm in general fund. Do you haven't seen those numbers yet? Okay. I'm just going to, I'm just making a, a, a note to you that when you get that budget package in August the 2nd and you look at the general, at the debt service fund, you're going to see a reduction in fund balance of $198,000 due to the fact because of the abatement came off, we lost and everything else, and we did issue bonds from that time. That's all I'm saying. It's nothing to panic right now, but it's like I want to let you know when you do see it, that's the reason. And I'm contemplating on hopefully next year those values will pick up. That's the only reason for that comment, okay? Now I'm going to step back in general fund mode. With that... Just want to let you know, one cent right now with the assumption is three hundred fifty-six thousand dollars, ninety cent collection rate. Gilbert, yes. Did, um, it used to not be ninety-seven percent. You didn't build your budget, right? Wasn't it ninety-seven five? How long ago did you change that? The collection rate? Yeah. It used to be ninety-eight. It used to be ninety-eight. Two years ago, Gilbert, Two years. I think went into ninety-seven. Two years until my collection started coming down less than that. So I said. I got to be fair about it. So you're using 97% on the entire. I'm in ballpark. How much is that 3% roughly, or that 1% rather? Do you know what the 1% from 98 to 97? Uh, be about, can I round up? Be closer? Sure, yeah, approximate. Two, 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 I'm not sure. Okay. I'll qualify that. He had a disclaimer I, I got, at the I'm beginning. I'm trying to picture so. the whole valuation of 3.6. <laughs> Billion divide that by a hundred times. Okay. Okay. But it, it's a it's a chunk. Yeah. Yes, okay. absolutely. If you want to, that's a good. Next year I'll make a note of that because I should have that number in my head. I well, apologize. no, it's not that. It's okay. I'm not the expert. Remember, I would be. You know, I'm more curious when we get actuals, and I like to look at. But I get you. I get you that. To... That's a good question. Absolutely. Last year's tax rate is fifty eight ninety two. 
So if you compare what we're proposing to last year, it's an increase of 0.23 cents. That's because of the decrease in valuation. Of course, we're not assuming any debt at all in 2018. The effective tax rate, based on this assumption, based on the tax and the valuation, comes out to 59.15. So we, we're, we're at the same level. Of course, uh, rollback estimate, of course, based on these numbers, the rollback for the city ordinance is 60.86. We're, we're below that by 1.71. Now, from the state, Hopefully they get their finalized everything, which should be about 2.73 below the state uh, rollback number. Of course, if they're, as you recall, when, year, when last year we went out to the 58 some cents, frozen property stayed at 57.11. So whatever happens this year, that, they, they are not going to see any increase at all if their frozen property is exempt in place. So just a note. I just go put this slide up here for reference only. You can look through it. So uh, basically, the, two, the 0 0.3 cents increase is basically higher. It's higher than last year's effective tax rate. I don't have to spend much time here. Is basically I want to show you how the money is allocated. The 57% of the tax rate is MO side, 43% is on debt side. And of course, I have given you this allocation, how it's allocated each division, the percentage, and everything else. Moving on, I found this very interesting, and I'm, I, don't, I don't have this just to show, make a point, but it's, it's when you, a number guy like me, I do like to see what, what is it really happening on the per capita situation when you look at one budget to another budget. So what I, did, what I did here is that I took the 2009 budget. If you go back to 2009 budget, you adjust it for the CIP, 2017 average to what was it average in 2009, you come up, like for example, public safety budget was 22.9 per capita. If you translate that for the inflationary and also for the population itself growth over the years, you have a per capita of $441 per capita. You do the 2018 by the population, you have 407 dollars per capita. So what that tells me basically is if you want to go back, well, how are we doing in prior year's budget? We're not really keeping in line with inflation rate and the growth. That's all it says. I'm not trying to direct it, but the numbers are the numbers. So public works. The only reason why you have a narrow gap there, because council made an effort over the years to start throwing money at streets. Not throwing money, you know what I mean, you know, funding streets. So you have closed, that's the logic there, okay? And there's nothing on council, let me make sure you understand that. It's just the time in place, what the money's available, what we have to face with. Parks, you know, you have a delta there, a difference of about $20. $20. This is new, you haven't done this before. I did it last year, but did you? this is prettier. Yeah. He had a color to it. <laughs> I don't remember this. Yeah, that's why nobody remembers because it's like, what? what? Yeah. Uh, so I just, just like so put a little art to it. Yeah, yeah, now let's see this. Mm -hmm. General administration, of course. Development services. Library. Now departmental. And I threw in this table here just in case anybody wants to go back and look at the numbers and calculate themselves. So back in 2009, the population is 63,000. The average CIP for the whole year is 24.537. Also throw the 17 population and the average what we have now on the CIP index. Bottom line is that you can tell for you, if you start considering inflation and cost value of the dollar, typically we have not kept up. Not on the fault of anybody, just the time. It might be shortfall of money, but that's, that's what <clears throat> that is. Okay. Slow down a minute. Go oh, back to go back. I don't to want that. to spend. Okay. Okay. Oh, let me go back one more. Oh, yeah. So, I'll be very clear. So, what you're saying there in our 09 budget, we spent $838.50 per resident. If you, okay. And if you adjust for inflation and population. You're comparing that to our proposed 2018, where it is $714.64. Correct. So spending per resident, Person. not taxpayer, but just the total where population, population is. Has, is dropping. Okay. 
Thank with you. some mod modification on the street because we do have we did increase that over the years. Not as now, much, but there it is. Any reason you picked 09 or? I don't go that far back. It's 10 years, I guess. Was it, is it consistent or is there any? Well, never mind. Well, I can do all years, but it's like I just say, okay, let me just go back 10 years and whatever that year okay. is. Boom, there it is. Okay. I can do five. You can have a different type well, of ratio I, and everything else. But this is. Uh, I want to give a 10 year gap. And you're counting uh, which revenue in this? Um, general fund, uh, sales tax? Revenue. Or all revenue in general fund? What revenue are you? Those are expenses. expenses. These are expenses. expenses. Are expenses. Yeah. I, I, yeah that's well, look. they're supposed to equal, but anyway. Well, I could have done the same I thing. Understand. This is not I didn't want to water, get too... wastewater. It's not the enterprise fund. It's just general no. fund. Okay. I think now, that's what now I meant to Now, your point ask. on that, okay. I have done some other worksheet that, that I've done in it for the overall city. I've done mm -hmm. it for the general fund. I've done it for the water and everything else, but mm -hmm. I've like one year to another year, but I haven't gone back and do, okay, let me do 10 years of revenue side, do some uh, cost inflation and everything else, see how that look. I can do that too, but I had enough 80 slides in here. I didn't want to throw some more in there, but I could. <laughs> no, 80's good. Okay. <laughs> now this slide, I'm not going to go through it. Basically on your left-hand side is your recurring expenses. On the right-hand side, light color, are your matching recurring revenues, how each – division will practically be funded. That's all that says, okay? That's for reference information. Okay, now here's the good stuff. Now, what, what I'm planning, as of right now, uh, of course, July will be my final number, but right now I'm looking at to end the year of 2017 with about $14.7 million. I expect to collect in the coming year about $46 million. I expect to spend about $45.8 or $45.9 million in recurrent expenses. I throw in the one-time expenses. Now I got a year in fund balance projected at $12.467 million. My reserve is set at 12.1, 25% reserve of total expenses. You had to recurrent in one time, hit it with 25%. That's that number. So we have an excess fund balance right now of $394,000, oh, $395,000. Recurring revenue versus recurring expenses right now, it's $154,000. But remember, I have $121,000 in there that I had to carry over for next year's pay program to, to be dollar for dollar match. Okay? So you take that out, there's about $30,000 left over. Okay? It's tight. That's an understatement. Well, I, I was being nice. <laughs> All right. And recapping, you know, we're right now, as of today, it's going to change. We're opposing tax rate 5915. I make sure. As of today, by July, in the July, it might change. Tax rate will equal the effective tax rate right now. No new bond issue. We're going to rely on certain program costs to other funds we mentioned, the Water Environmental Service. We continue the current core services. We're going to hopefully provide one-time money of $2.4 million, and we're going to take on a $422,000 step plan recurrent pay program. That's all I have for tonight. I think yeah. we're good. No Questions, but I, I ha I'd like to... Propose something, and do you have any additional handout yes. for that proposal? But we'll, well do it not handout. I'm, I got on the okay. side. Okay, that sounds good. You're so, uh, if there's not any questions, what I would like for you to consider, and I don't expect an answer tonight, is above that effective tax rate, an additional penny um, in order for us to add to police officers. Um, Gilbert's got it up there. We a little more money in the debt service fund and then some money toward the parks and street maintenance programs because we are getting behind in those areas. And again, I don't expect an answer tonight because I, you know, take very seriously asking for additional tax dollars above the effective tax rate. And as a reminder, that effective tax rate basically gives us the same amount of money to operate with what we've been uh, did the year before. So and we've not asked for a whole lot of tax increases. I, I went back and looked, and no. Gilbert goes back 10 years to 09. I went back to 07, and we were at 69 cents in the tax rate. This past year, we're at 58.92. So uh, you can see that you know through the years when we've had our valuations go up, 
we have come down on the tax rate. When we've been able to rely more on sales tax dollars, we've, you know, again, come down on the tax rate. So, I, you know, I don't take it lightly to make the recommendation, but I would like for um, serious consideration. You heard the chief last night say that we're just behind on those officers and how many he needs. Of course, it is easy to drop the tax rate when times are good. Mm -hmm. I've never had one person say, great, you dropped the tax rate by a penny or two. I have had them say, why haven't you fixed this street or that street or done this or that? Um, now we have to step up to the plate and say, can you raise them as quickly as you can lower them? I think we have a crisis mode in the police department. I think we have a need. We better be able to have the guts to do this. Yes, ma'am. 59.15 that you're talking about right now that I know it's not set in stone. We would add one more cent to 60.15 as a tax rate. Whatever the effect of tax rate is, you have one penny. Okay. Basically. Okay. Do you have a copy of this slide for us anywhere? I can get it to you. Yes, I'll send it to Charmel tonight, and she can send yeah. it out. Okay, I'll send it out. Yeah, I'd like to have that. Now, again, I want to make sure you understand that the this budget framework, the forty-eight million dollars from change, was built around that effective tax rate concept. Okay. So anything we add, we add that yeah. one penny. I, I would agree with uh, Councilman Halapaska's comment about the police department. Um, that we need to give this some serious thought. So, and we have many time, uh, a lot of time to discuss and think about and question further in the budget. On the budget calendar, Gilbert, when will we have to? Do you, you may not know off the top of your head, and I'm sorry, I don't either. There'll come a date when we'll have to post that the tax well, rate that we're right. proposing. When is it? Uh, I don't know. That August 24th. When we present the budget, on August 1st, I believe, we're going to have. This is an example. You, we will set a maybe a higher tax rate, but there's a given time we have our readings that we have to decide. Okay, we're going with this, or we're going to drop it, because if you're not, if you decide to go in at a at a flat rate, and then later you want to increase, and I have to start the program again on a number of dates, and I can get you that date well, yeah, so, so you can send it out. Think about it, and then uh, you know we can talk about it at any of the council meetings. If you'll let me know ahead of time, I'll be glad to put it on the agenda. But it's, you know, it's it's not it's not easy to ask for that additional money. But I think um, you know I'm asking for you to give it due consideration. Gilbert reminded us all our revenues are down, franchise franchise uh, fees are down, sales tax are down, our property values are down. So um, we're not seeing the growth that we need to keep up. And I think our department heads have proven through the years that they really look at ways to do things more efficiently. You saw all the negative numbers in all the departments uh, this year. Uh, they were challenged to try to make some cuts uh, to help pay for a pay program. Uh, and so they did do that. And, uh, you know, we've still, we're still meeting the needs of the citizens, and we've still got a service demand that goes on every day. Getting a lot of blank stares up here. <laughs> it was a long presentation, a lot to, they're, they're, a lot they're to think about. I understand. Uh, understand. So. You know, I yeah, so. but I I would I need to go personally. I don't, council absorb a lot of this information Absolutely. and think it over. And I staff, that's a great job, wonderful presentation. You are very thorough. I have a great deal of trust in all of these presentations of what you'll do. So I, it's very appreciated. Well, you know, I've said this before. I'm going to say it again tonight. I, I think we have the best leadership team in the state of Texas. And I, I can only say the state of Texas because I know a lot of the cities. I probably put them up against a lot of other uh, states in the United States. They do a job every day that requires them to be um, tenacious is one thing, but also to be efficient. And look, they're looking at those dollars every day. They recognize that we're asking citizens to pay a price and we want to make sure that value is good. You know, our uh, we like to say, you know, we're enhancing the livability of our residents, and they and they do that. They see <coughs> that stuff every day. So again, you know, uh, they're doing a great job. And Gilbert, I appreciate what you've done with putting the budget together, and appreciate all the department head presentations department. last night and tonight. Did a great job. So uh, they work hard at making sure that tax dollar is well spent. 
I don't have any Council? Yeah. Questions, thoughts, anything? Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Good job. We're adjourned. <laughs> thank you. This thing's pretty heavy. <laughs>